Welcome to Scorched Death and a general reading for the sign of Aries, Sun, Moon or Ascendant. For June 2021. I hope you are. Using the Llewellyn Tarot for you today. Uh, do I have anything to tell you? No. Mercury retrograde is occurring. B. Retrograde until the 22nd of June, I think, and then we'll have like a two week shadow period after that. So um, just be aware it's something that's uh, in operation. <coughs> Usual rules apply, you know, kind of expect old things to resurface, whether they are feelings or people or whatever, you know, but it's giving you an opportunity to to tie those loose ends up nicely. That's what the energy is about, you know. So if you can spend it in a reflective frame of mind rather than attempting to do anything new, then that's, that's a really good use of the energy. Um, what else? Expect travel disruption. Mm. Miscommunications are extremely likely because the, the retrograde is actually in Gemini this time. So don't assume that you understand what somebody means when they say something because the likelihood is that they're finding it difficult to articulate what they're trying to say and you may too also find that to be a thing. So it is what it is. Ride it out. It's not too long. There will be an extended at the end of this video if this resonates with you. So. <clears throat> Let's get three cards for you. I'll close the window in a second when the cauldrons burn down. I have three cards for Aries. Okay, there's the first one. We have the Knight of Pentacles. In your recent past. And I have current energy for Aries, please. Thank you. We have the Ace of Cups. That's really nice. I like that. And what's coming towards Aries in June? We have the universe, the world. This is nice. I actually just forgot for a second there when I was doing the meditation before I started your reading. I saw two very clear images and they, they feel to me like they meant the same thing. The first was just a set of curtains opening like on a stage, you know, stage curtains, <clears throat> revealing what's what was behind it. And there wasn't anything behind it for me to see, but, but that was the important motion. And I also watched a, uh, a moon set as well. It feels to me a little bit like things will be revealed to you this month. Um, things that have been, up until this point, obscured and hidden. And that could be, in an obvious sense, it could be, you know, you're finding out something that you didn't know. Or it could be about a level of insight that you get about yourself this month. I'm, I'm not quite sure which way around it sits, but maybe we might get some insight to it when the rest of the cards are on the table. So tell me about the Knight of Pentacles, please. Ooh. We have the Eight of Cups. And the Two of Pentacles. Get that down there. Tell me about the Ace of Cups, please. Thank you. We have the Six of Wands. I like that. Mm -hmm. And we have the Hanged Man. Oh, that's very interesting. And what about the world? Why is the world here, please? Thank you. We have the Devil in Reverse. And we have Temperance. Oh, that's nice. You've got three major arcana for, you know, ooh, actually four, because we have the sun at the bottom of the deck here. <coughs> So we start with the Knight of Pentacles, it's Virgo energy, and it, it talks about movement, but it talks about very slow, very measured steps forward, so like quite the opposite of the way that you are used to traveling. It's uh, the, the Knight of Wands is uh, your knight as a fire sign. And it's usually given to be quite uh, reckless, sometimes a little bit feckless, you know, kind of rushing in rather than, you know, checking itself. <clears throat> and it's very uncommitted as well, you know, for, for better or worse, whichever way you want to look at it. You know, sometimes that means being very spontaneous and uh, um, oh, living very much in the present. But it can also be all of the negative aspects of that there. The Knight of Pentacles is very, very different because not only in terms of speed, but in the way that one approaches the task of the knight. So all of the knights 
obviously refer to movement, but they they're dealt with the transmission of something. So with the Knight of Wands, it is that, that passionate energy, you know, really exciting, dramatic, spontaneous energy. With the Knight of Pentacles, it's a little bit different because I see the Pentacle hierarchy from the page, certainly to the Queen, as different levels of understanding the value of something. So in its initial state, we have the Page of Pentacles and it's kind of newly discovering this thing again. This is really cool. I want more of these. You know, I, I understand the value of, the, of what this is. And this could be a value of anything, but m most usually I see it as the value of oneself, right? We're talking about self-worth, self-esteem, that sort of thing. The Knight of Pentacles then holding as he does the pentacle out in front of him is now moving out into the world and he's taking this to the Queen who will nurture it and uh, you know <clears throat> look after it and turn it into something even bigger, you know. But this point of discovering the value of something to the point where you are actively engaged in, in growing and cultivating more of it requires this transmission, it requires the Knight of Pentacles. So it is slow, measured steps forward, understanding your own worth, your own value, what it is that you bring to the world right? as, as, as a sovereign being. Like, <clears throat> But it's also about knowing where to put your energy. And I think that you've been somewhat in a state of flux. There's been a lot of chaos around quite a few of the signs recently. And the interesting thing is that almost all of them are looking for ways to weave some order out of the chaos. You know, chaos is inherently feminine, right? <clears throat> As... Uh, as its expression of energy. The masculine form of the energy is very active, it's very direct, it's very ordered. Mm. And it seems to me like a lot of the signs have been surrounded by this deep feminine chaos within which we find much creativity as well, I have to say. And they're starting to find their feet with it and they're starting to hold that sense of order within themselves, which is is magnificent. I, I as a tarot reader watching this is, I, I'm impressed by what's going on and you definitely seem to be falling into that category of signs who are looking for ways to to weave the order out of chaos now what we've got underneath the uh, knight of pentacles is the eight of cups and the two of pentacles so very much concerned with you finding your center and i'm impressed by the way that you're going about this aries because it is involving you paying very careful attention to detail on stuff now <clears throat> it's not something that your sign is particularly well known for, right? You're not detail oriented. It's about, you know, getting out there and, and cutting, you know, a blazing trail for others to follow. But there's a much slower approach to what it is that you've been doing now. And I, I think it's because you've had to take such a careful um, approach to what you have been dealing with inside of you and, and outside of you too, because I think a lot of you have been reassessing the people and the situations and everything that you've been involved with and identifying that a lot of the chaos that you feel, right, not only is it because of what's going on in here, but there's, there's an element of it outside too. And with this Eight of Cups, we see you kind of moving away, pulling away from things that feel they don't even have to feel necessarily toxic, to be honest. It's it's not that there needs to be in it anything inherently bad about the circumstances or people that you find yourself immersed in. It's more a settling of the spirit and going, okay, well, well these people make me feel good. Like, I feel good around these people. These people make me feel mm, less good. And so... Actually, I'm going to be quite careful and I'm going to be quite discerning about where I spend my time, where I spend my pentacles. And that is going to have involved necessarily a kind of pulling away from certain groups, certain people, certain situations. And it's all very considered. It's all very careful. And it's all being done in this very measured way. <clears throat> 
to bring balance to you. Which is incredible because, you know, you're working here with elements that, that are not yours. Pentacles and cups are, are difficult sometimes for fire signs to, to work with. Right? It's so different to their energy. But there's something here of, of recognizing that where there has been an imbalance in you, where you have felt somewhat emotionally chaotic, you can choose to take yourself away from situations that exacerbate that. But there's also a sense of you taking responsibility for that sense of chaos within you, right? Rather than running, which is something that, that Aries and Sagittarius have in common, I think, quite strongly. Like they're always forwards and you know, there's there's something of the you know, the explorer and the adventurer about both of you. <clears throat> But as we've spoken about before in previous readings, there's this um, this undercurrent that has often not been acknowledged by either of you. That this need to relentlessly drive forwards is sometimes a way of of escaping from the past, refusing to have to look at the past because you're always looking that way. Yeah, Sagittarius tends to take a more circuitous route to things because they you know, get distracted along the way and they'll go and do you know X, Y, and Z. Whereas Aries tends to be very focused, very goal oriented, and you know, you're a cardinal sign, right? So you're always pointing in a direction and ready to go. <clears throat> but there's something very mature about what's going on here for you. Very responsible. And very reflective too, very considered. Now when we move into your present energy, we've got the Ace of Cups and I actually really like to see this here because when we put it in combination with that Eight of Cups, which if you've never really looked at it before, has one very obvious space left for, you know, for another cup to be sitting in. When you put those together, you end up with the Nine of Cups. And the Nine of Cups is about personal emotional responsibility. It's about understanding those things that give you joy, knowing that it is you who is responsible for your own emotional state at any point, and, and really kind of aligning yourself with, with um, both the sense of responsibility, but also the, the wonder of being able to be a self-fulfilling entity right not needing the people around you to give you validation or you know whatever and so here we have in your present energy that ace of cups that pure potentiality of the element there in your hands and because of the groundwork that you've been doing where you're moving away from something that has not been emotionally fulfilling you're moving towards the ace in combination it's it's a uh, it's a grand maturation of your energy. And again, still, we're not having a single wand appearing here yet. Mm -hmm. Now, the Ace of Cups, like I said, it's a seed, it, and it's quite ephemeral. Like It, it can't be perceived like, uh, say, the Ace of Pentacles can. It's something that is felt. And often, I think that it's something that needs to be felt in stillness. If you're moving really, really fast, you can't see this. It has interpretations that run along lines of forgiveness and compassion and acceptance but it does speak of an opening up to things you know, things of a spiritual nature opening up emotionally you know uh, experiencing vulnerability and everything that that brings with it too things that traditionally make Aries very very uncomfortable but I feel like you've changed your perspective on an awful lot of things because here is the ones now and what we have is this Leo card of the six of wands it is a card of victory, it is a card of success, and it's here with the Hanged Man, card of Pisces. This is the only Wands card that appears in the entire reading, and like I said, it's one that speaks of victory. But the Hanged Man, it's about passivity, interestingly. It's about not rushing forwards for the sake of moving. It's about putting yourself in an uncomfortable position because you know you will get some enlightenment from this. You will gain the ability to see something from a different perspective. And this different perspective that you have employed 
has worked really, really rather well for you. It, like I said, it feels like you are pulling in all of the um, the other elements to teach you, almost, or almost to teach yourself how to use these, because no one should be all of one element like that. That would be very ultimately destructive. Actually, we need those other aspects to come in to balance ourselves out to make you know something that is is very very solid ultimately, and your stability. It seems to have been something that you have been concentrating on quite hard. Now, <clears throat> whether or not it is that you have discovered the value of, of acknowledging your own emotions, possibly even acknowledging others' emotions, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you've taken the time to turn yourself upside down and you have stopped moving and that's the, the the act of not moving is the hanged man for you <coughs> tell me about the hanged man yeah we have the chariot it's i feel like where you've been has been uh, and the wheel of fortune super i feel like where you have been has been quite uncomfortable for a little while aries and there's been this idea that perhaps uh, rather than doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result as you know the first sign as the one that blazes the trail maybe it was time for you to look for a different way to do things like your inventive creative mind has kind of got on board with this here and it does feel like it's very much linked in with this maturation of your emotions that's gone on too because because you're considering things now you're considering your actions you're considering your direction is it seems like there's a preservation of energy going on too i feel like you've probably been quite exhausted for the last few months and on the face of it that could have been the reason why you felt like you weren't really moving anywhere but actually you know I don't. I don't think that that's the case. We've got the chariot and the hang and the uh, wheel of fortune here, and this is really interesting because what this is saying to me is because you have taken the time to be still, because you have taken the time to consider other perspectives and bring in the wisdom of these other elements that are not yours. It's really helped you not only gain perspective. But reassess and reevaluate what it is that you actually want from your time here. Now, 2020 did this for quite a lot of people, to be honest. You know, that, that enforced restriction on movement you know, was, was quite novel in the first couple of weeks. But before too long, it had people absolutely climbing the walls and there was nothing to do. And eventually... There was nothing to be done but turn inwards, spend that time looking at yourself. I mean, there's only so much Netflix you can watch, right? I don't know, I didn't watch any, but <clears throat> I know other people do. And I think that what's happened here is an understanding that, that a not only have you moved often for the sake of moving, just for the sake of not standing still, but this reassessing and this reevaluation of everything has has actually shown you that values that you previously held are no longer working for you. It's almost like you stopped and go, well, why do I actually even think this? Why do I actually even feel like that? What What's that about? And when you sat down and you've pulled it apart, it feels like it's a bit of a, a bit of a straw donkey. You know, you're like, well, hang on, I thought this was a horse. It's not. It's a straw donkey. This isn't really even how I feel about things now. And so, as your value system is kind of adjusting, so your goals have adjusted too. You know, these little micro adjustments that you make in the present actually will 
um, eventually turn out to be much, much bigger adjustments further down the line. You know, you'd be out by one degree and when you're trying to go in a direction, you'll start off like there and you'll end up in an entirely different place. <coughs> And so I think that you're chasing something a little different now, or you're getting ready to chase something a little different because, because of this, this lack of movement, or at least this incredibly reduced movement, and I'm not talking in a physical sense now, I'm talking like in, in you know, in emotional and mental sense. <clears throat> has shown you an awful lot of things. And it was always designed to do exactly that with this Wheel of Fortune card here. It's actually drawn you to the present. It's drawn you to consider the energetic cost of going in the directions that you've been going. It's caused you to question new goals in the first place. Like, do I even really want this thing anymore? Well, possibly not. And what has happened now is that there has been a crystallization of, this is how it feels to me at least anyway, a crystallization of what these lessons that you've been engaged with in the last few months into a path now you know you've refined an awful lot of things about you there's the there's an increasing sophistication in the way that you are approaching a lot of things here like aries are known for being a bit of a blunt instrument sometimes right like no shade all of us fire signs have uh, an aspect of that It's all being tempered, though, with this wisdom. And it isn't always necessary to hit everything, you know, with that, that full on accidental aggression that seems to, you know, characterize fire signs, interactions with the planet, you know, whether it's people or situations or whatever. <coughs> but there's something very strong now that you're feeling a pull towards. And I don't think that you quite know what it is yet, but what I do know is that there is an innate understanding within you, ephemeral as it may feel at the moment, that something really significant has changed for you inside. And now, nothing can quite be the same. Like I said, micro adjustments that are ending up miles apart further down the road, because in June, what we have is the world card. Now, the world card is the culmination of the major arcana soup, right? And the major arcana is the fool's journey. As the last card, it signifies completion. And there is the completion of a cycle that you have been in for a very long time that is now being shown to us. You know, this could be a cycle as large as this being, you know, the end of the first cycle and the beginning of the second. And there will be lots and lots of little cycles that have always been at play within that, that one bigger one. But this feels immense, right? It could just be that it was from, you know, from you approaching adulthood to where you are now. Like, this is the cycle that's completing. You've, you've experienced a lot of things, you've made a lot of mistakes, and for a lot of time you maybe just barreled through them. Now you've stopped, you've taken a step back, you've looked at things, you've reflected on things, you've taken responsibility for stuff, even though that's really uncomfortable. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. And more than that, you're practicing more compassion and forgiveness towards yourself than you ever thought you were possible of, of undertaking. I'm impressed with the level of compassion and acceptance that I'm seeing here too. And what's really, really beautiful about that world card is that we have the devil in reverse and we have this here, temperance, your sister fire sign is Sagittarius ruling that card. This is Capricorn, by the way. And now the devil signifies all of those things that are awful and toxic about our world, right? He actually has other... Uh, 
interpretations that are not negative, but you don't hear about those very often. Anyway, that doesn't matter because we're kind of going with the negative view of this card here anyway. You know, this talks about the ways in which we are chained to things. Now, with with you, like I was saying, that chaining is to the relentless drive forwards. I always zoom in. That's the word that I use for Sagittarians, actually, zoom in. I, I got a Sagittarian daughter and a Sagittarian partner. And I've learned, known a lot of Sagis over the years and they all zoom. I always do everything really, really fast. And most of them never even think about the fact that they do things really, really fast. And you go, why, why are you so fast? Why are you always zooming? And they go, that's what I do. I, but it's so that they don't stop because usually the contents of their head like try and start to, to, to devour them if they do that. And I feel like it's a very, very similar thing for you, Aerie. It's like the contents of your head, the contents of your soul and your heart and all of those things like kind of reach up and try and throttle you. If you have tried to stand still for too long, that's the devil energy at work on you. Now, with this peace and this acceptance and this forgiveness and compassion that you are now actively practicing, what's happening is you've re reversed the devil. You've thrown off all the yoke and the tethers that kept you bound to something, you know, because we'll put it this way, right? If you are actively ignoring something, if you are actively running away from it, even though you are not actively engaging with it, you are still tethered to it. You can't ignore something if you don't know that it's there. You can't actively ignore something if you don't know that it's there, right? You, you can fail to see it and all that sort of thing. But like an active ignoring, I'm not paying attention to that, requires you to tacitly acknowledge that that thing exists. Otherwise, you couldn't avoid it all the time. You didn't keep bumping into it and you'd be like, holy shit, what are you doing here? You know, whatever the devil represents to you. <clears throat> and so it is when you're running away from something as well. And I think a lot of you have turned around and faced whatever your devil is. Kind of looked at it and gone, well, I don't really want to run away from you anymore. It's like it's energetically expensive. It wears me out. And I don't feel joy and, and fun. You know, I, I don't feel those easy emotions if I stop because everything tries to eat me up. But do you know what? I'm going to turn around, I'm going to face you and I'm going to actually deal with you once and for all. And I feel like this is what's happening here for you in the month of June. It is a true culmination of this work that you have been indulged in here, engaged in. Because then we have the temperance card. We have you bringing balance. We have you bringing a sense of peace. <clears throat> sounding card you know the temperance card is one of those as all the tarot do actually that has a multitude of meanings right but often the simplicity of the image undermines just the the level of power that is implied by the presence of this card you know we have behind this angel we have a, a really long road and there are mountains in the background and there is a crown above it there are true difficulties there are true adversities that you have conquered in your past and it's been a very fucking long road to get you to where you are now where you actually favor a sense of internal peace rather than itching for drama that pulls you away from having to consider your internal space you know But just as you are consulting with the energies of water and earth to get to you to where you are now, so the temperance card is doing the same, you know. Not only do we have them pouring from one cup into another, right, filling your own cup first, actually spending the time to attend to yourself emotionally, rather than considering that to be, you know, uh, kind of pansy behaviour. But the angel has one foot in the water and one foot on the ground, right? It is balanced emotion. It is understanding the value of both of these things to keep you level and stable. It is also a card of divine guidance and divine orchestration. 
And I think if you look at the way that your life has been, and I don't know, I think possibly for the last year or so, it's really been a bit of a roller coaster for you, Aries. It's been up and down and up and down and up and down. And, and it's been so difficult riding this wave over and over again that finding your center has been almost impossible. I mean, that nice level line that runs in the middle of all of these undulations. It's almost like you've been in just in survival mode for quite a long time. But here we have you stopping. Because the key to getting off the roller coaster actually has always been within you. It's never been about the outside events that have been going on around you. It's been, it's the, the necessity has been to change your perspective. And we've seen you doing that. We've seen you absolutely doing that. It's about understanding what it is that you can control because also control issues are a thing that, that is often very present in areas, but usually because you've been brought up having no control over you, important things yourself, you know? So you get into adulthood and you're like, right, fuck. So for me to feel safe, I need to move really fast all the time and I need to control the shit out of my environment. Those two things need to be present, otherwise I'm going to flip my biscuits, right? <clears throat> and when the universe has picked you up and put you on this, you know, vomit-inducing roller coaster that's seen you not only undulating up and down, but doing fucking corkscrews and, you know, all that sort of thing, you can't control that. And what I see here is an acceptance that you can't control it and a knowledge of what you can control, which is your perception of it. You know, that's how you make the roller coaster stop. That's how you get off the roller coaster. That's how you remain the, the eye of the storm, the peace within the chaos. You know, I can't, I can't get over how similar the themes of the readings for all of the signs are like June seems to be a really pivotal month for every single sign. Now, I haven't kept up with the astrology, don't quite know what's going on in the heavens at the moment, but with this level of correlation of experience between all of the signs, I'm assuming that there is some sort of astrological event that is kind of having everybody experience this to one degree or another. But the important thing is for you in June, there is a huge cycle completing. It's huge. And I actually think that you feel it really strongly. You know it's it's here. It's, it, it's very, very close. And you have dealt with so many things that frighten you. You've conquered so much adversity. That now you value peace. And just that one sentence on its own indicates such a level of growth for Aries. I can't even tell you. Let me pull one more card for this. <clears throat> tell me about the devil in the card. Thank you. Yeah. It's the tower. You had your own tower moment. I think I think it's been a long drawn out tower for, for quite a while for you and it's like everything, one after the other, everything's just gone fucking wrong. <clears throat> and at first you were just like, right, it's okay, I'll just deal with this, right? It's fine. This is what I do. I'm capable. I'm resilient. I'm strong. I'll do all of these things. And as the dominoes have fallen one after the other after the other, it's got to that point where actually it's... I feel it in my throat. It's, it's always like being difficult to fucking breathe through all of it. And you're like, there's literally nothing else that can go wrong now. And then there's something goes on and you're like, fuck's sake, you know. And I just feel like you've sat in the middle of it for a while, Aries, and just like, this is, it's too much. It's too much. How the fuck am I supposed to deal with all of this? It's ridiculous. What, you know, what a wrathful deity have I pissed off that is now kicking the shit out of me over and over and over again. But, there was a lesson in here and, and Aries, it needed to be kind of brutal for you to be able to see it properly and more importantly 
for you to submit to it. Hmm? But submit you did. And it feels like the relief it started almost immediately. You know, you've learned a really profound lesson and what happens in June is the culmination of all of these lessons coming together because the world card, like I said, indicates that, that completion. But from there, we go to the full, which is your card, right? It is the first card. It is starting a new cycle. Like, this has been about really pulling the guts of who you are out so that you can look at them and go right all of this is healthy that can go back in this oof, don't even know what that does let's fuck that off right <clears throat> sticks and twigs and you know i don't know i don't know where i'm going with that metaphor but really it's a thing it's been really digging to the root of who you are and not what you do that's been the important thing and this is the tower that you have been pulling down with the help of the universe. I say help of the universe, right? I'm sure it didn't feel like that at the time. But I like this for you because I think from here, we're gonna see you going off in a very different trajectory in July, right? Because this is, this is tidying up. This is pulling in all of the loose ends and going, this cycle is complete now. I know who I am. July, I start moving on in my new cycle. So, Aries, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to go over to Vimeo. If this reading has resonated with you at all, there's a link down in the description box. You can come and follow me over there. If not, not to worry. Um, I will be back next Monday with the All Signs readings that I do every week. Um, yeah. I'm really proud of you, Aries. If no one's told you that recently, this is, this is incredible work. You know, you should give yourself a pat on the back. I actually feel quite emotional as I'm saying that now. Like, <clears throat> give yourself a cup of on the back because you did good here. And it's been hard and I see, I see how hard it's been for you. So, <clears throat> I know that I love you all very, very much and I will see you soon.